Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines. And for the first time, we welcome you to uh, church. For those of you who don't know me, or really know me, uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of a backstory of who I am. Uh, Long story short, I was born in the world just like anyone else. My parents met. My mom's Japanese, and uh, my dad was a Marine, and he's black. Um, They got together and had about four of us it would be my oldest brother with Chris um, the second Anthony myself and my sister Um, so yeah we moved around a lot they got a divorce one day that was very heartbreaking for me I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys can relate and I hope some of you guys can't relate and some people probably wish you guys don't you know some people some of you guys don't even like your parents but you know it's another conversation well when they got a divorce I didn't know how to take this but I remembered it you know I didn't know how to feel but the one thing that I do remember is feeling a sort of emptiness Like, I had no security anymore. You know, my mom, she struggled with alcohol, and my dad was never in the picture, never heard a word from him. So I I watched my mom, you know, date a lot of... They weren't gentlemen, and uh, some even claimed that they knew God. And that was tough. My sister once told me that I, I said that I hated God. I don't remember that. But when it all cleared up and we moved to the States, we were in Japan at that time. I, um, I was being transferred to all these different schools when I was growing up. Not private schools or anything, just, you know, public schools, just there was no security in my life. There was no consistency in any aspect of it. And uh, all I really heard all the time was you're worthless. You're nothing. You know, my mom, that's how she felt or she would always cry all the time. The only way she found relief was drinking and, um, you know moved around the family's houses and from what I understood she got a divorce one of the reasons was my dad was a Christian so he claims and my mom became a Buddhist then we moved to the States the divorce finally settled years later and I remember the only reason that I wanted to move with my mom was because she spent the most time with me My dad was always at work. It wasn't my choice uh, alone. I was, before I even knew what I was doing, I didn't, I was probably like five years old. Anyways, uh, so you know, when you're raised in a house, when you don't have a father to be there, you kind of just... You go through this, like, you just, you want to be accepted. And one of the father's jobs is to tell his children who they are. And I don't remember, I think I barely remember my dad's voice, if maybe even not, I don't know. But, um, yeah, so I, I searched, just like all my other brothers and my sister, you know, and we all, my, my mom dated this one gentleman. He wasn't a gentleman, by the way. He was terrible. 
<clears throat> he claimed he knew God and he was just an alcoholic. He was miserable. He made everyone miserable. He broke our entire family apart, even made it worse, you know. You know, brothers pick on each other and they bully each other, but he brought in abuse. Let's just say that much. And uh, that was horrible for about 10 plus years. It was like 15 years. Watched my entire family disintegrate into not even wanting to talk to each other. We disliked each other, but we still talked to each other. But when he came in the picture, we just now we don't even talk to each other. You know, the second oldest, he joined the military. The first oldest, he ran around everywhere and. I don't even talk to him right now. I know. I know I'm preaching a message <laughs> about forgiveness. Within all that, my sister talks to me. I, my mom and I sort of talk. We all still talk to our mom now. That's the weird part. So, or probably the good part. There were some good memories, though. I'm not going to say it was completely horrible. It wasn't. But those negative experiences can be tied to, they can seem like the only experiences. Like when I look back at my life, all I see is the negative. But I promise you there's some good, good things in there too. The negative just, when a negative, when you or I or anyone has a negative experience, it just clouds everything. And um, hopefully we can un unveil those things and, and, and learn what they really are. Maybe in this one, uh, sermon, maybe in another one. So I joined the military right after my second oldest brother. The first one went all over the place. My sister didn't join the military, but she went to school. And my mom had another child with the man that she was with for about 10 to 15 years. I don't know, to be honest, but I know it was at least 10 years. And we don't talk, and he's, at least as of right now, he's going through a lot <clears throat> at his age. He's about to be 18. So we're all kind of scattered right now. And from when we grow up, if you don't have a father, the next best thing is the influences that you see in the world. Other people's fathers or other people and, or television. Yeah, I know. And those are not examples of how to raise kids. And what does the media teach us? Well, I know most of you guys already know that. But let me give you, for those who don't watch TV, a little bit of a... We can all agree that the media does not teach us very good things. In fact, it teaches us that partying, it teaches us that, you know, drinking and having nice clothes and having this and that and the other is, is good. It teaches us that bad things are good. Those things aren't entirely bad, but excessively they are, just like anything else. Food is not bad, but a lot of food is bad. Drugs, that's a different topic, but for the most part, the drugs that we're talking about, like meth and stuff like that, that's bad. When you become addicted to the point where you need it, it's bad. So, this world, as if I were to make it my judgment, I would say it's evil. Straight, straight out of the mother's womb, straight to the grave, we live in an evil world. We don't live in a perfect world. And um, I was born just like anyone else into that world. And some people and some of you guys were born into good families and went to church and all these things. And some people were born into families who went to church and they felt like the world was better. But while we are here in this world, we have to decide who we're going to serve. It's one thing for certain that I know. 
I had some terrible experiences in the military, but I met some great people and I've had some good experiences as well. I've almost tried to kill myself a few times when I got out of the military. I became homeless. I hated my brothers and my sister my whole life. I was that guy. And, you know, I still make mistakes today. You know, I barely graduated high school. I was not a popular kid. I was actually a kid who stayed to himself and I drew a lot. That was me. I'm sure every school has that and you know who I was. Because when I looked at the world, my home was filled with chaos and school was filled with chaos. Kids comparing themselves to everyone, everyone's fighting, especially where I grew up at. There was these turf wars. And uh, as I look around today, it's kind of the same thing. I kind of feel like I'm still in school. And I remember, I knew this much. This was, I wanted to take a chance. I've listened to all these voices and people in my life, just like a lot of you have. This is the way you should go. This is what you should do. And for the first time, I came to the conclusion, I came to my senses as the uh, prodigal son. And I realized something. I had a friend, I used to smoke marijuana, drugs, everything, sex with whomever, it doesn't matter. And the question that I asked myself was, when I was hanging out with one of my friends, he says, we're gods. That's what he said. And I was playing around, playing along with it and everything. And I was like, you know, yeah, yeah. And then I realized something. I'm like, if I'm God, why do I feel like crap? Why is my whole life messed up? So that went right out of the window. I'm not God. But there, I was searching for something. I would like to tell you my personal testimony of meeting God. But I feel like we're going we're gonna to sidestep that for right now. What's the meaning of life? That was the question I asked. I don't know how he works. I don't know, but he got me here. And when I look back, the meaning of life is love. Now everyone has their own definition of what love means. And you will be rightfully so only because that's what you choose to believe. But if you were to step on this side of the fence, our definition as Christians of what love means is what Jesus did for us on the cross and how he lived his life. And Jesus says this, he says, if you wanna to come to heaven, you have to follow in my footsteps and forsake this world because it's evil from its youth. Everyone is filled with pride and everyone is cursed from the beginning from Adam and Eve. No one does good, no, not one. No one knows how to love their father or their mother Neither do, no one, no one is good. But if you want to get out of hell, not go to hell, if you want a redeemed life, he says, you come to the altar, you come to me, you follow me for my sheep hear my voice. Now, this is not just a message for Battle Mountain. This is a message for the world. God asked me 
really interesting question. <clears throat> he said, he didn't use my name, you know, my human name, but he said, who do you want to be? That was a hard question for me to answer. Probably the hardest question I had to answer. Because when I look at my life, I see myself trying to be everyone else. Trying to fit in, trying to be accepted. But sometimes what people are doing is wrong. But no one says anything about it because they're afraid to not be accepted anymore. But if we believe in the same moral truth that this is wrong, then it doesn't matter if people hate us for saying it because it's wrong. And that's the choice that we all have to make in this life. Who are you gonna stand for? Someone else's opinion. You don't say this because this person may not like you anymore. What are you going to do when you're faced, as you will and have been faced, with making a moral choice? Let's go do a bunch of evil. You already know what they are. It's written on all of our hearts. Is one of you or are you going to stand up for the truth and say, I'm not doing that because that's wrong. Or you just want to fit in. A lot of my life, I've just tried to fit in. And God told me this. He says, you can't love man and love me. You either are accepted by the world and what people think about you or you are accepted by what God thinks about you. That's faith. I have to trust in someone that I don't see, but wait a minute. If there is a God, then he created everything that we see and everything that we don't see. So the question is, do you want to be who you were designed to be? Or do you want to keep being who everyone else tells you who you are? So someone can just come up to you and say you're ugly and you just believe that and put a bunch of makeup on your face. Or buy a bunch of jewelry and clothing and think that's your value when those things are going right in the trash. You want to keep buying new houses and new trucks. People give you compliments. Oh, that's a nice house. That's a big truck. That's awesome. Nice clothes, nice hair. But one day you will be old. And one day that car will break down and you have to buy another one. Do you value things more than you value God and people? That's why our world's so messed up. Because there's something wrong with our heart. We compare each other to each other to try to one-up each other. Keeping up with the Joneses, you, you hate these people. Why are you trying to keep up with them? But Jesus says something even more amazing. He says, love your enemies. And I don't mean a love that's just, hey, what's up, da 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 and then you go, and when they walk away, you talk a bunch of crap about them. No, I mean really loving them. Man, I love that, man. That person's awesome, man. That's not, that's not just Battle Mountain. That's an entire world. We all struggle. It's okay to struggle, but what it's not okay is to live in denial and act like it's not happening and act like you guys are friends and act like everything's okay when it's not. We know our world's messed up. We know Battle Mountain's messed up. Everybody wanna, wants to shift the blame to everybody else. But when are you going to start standing up for truth, doing the right thing? Not because someone has to tell you to do the right thing, 
because that's what's in your heart and not because you need a reward to do the right thing, but because that's who you are. You see, that's what's wrong. And there's a lot more wrong. When I look at my children, God has shown me this and I've, I've seen people in the world out in society and he shows me my child in their face. For a moment, I see their faces and then I see my daughters. And I go, how can I hate them? And he describes us as being sheep led to the slaughter. We don't know what we're doing. We don't know where we're doing, going. We're just copying everybody. Trying to be accepted. Maybe if I do this, maybe if I get this, then people will finally accept me. Is a lily trying to be an elephant or an elephant trying to be the ocean? No. Or the grass trying to be the stars? No. Everything is designed to be who it was designed to be. If you were a man, you're supposed to be a man. If you're a woman, you're supposed to be a woman. You're not supposed to be a man. You're not supposed to be a man if you're a woman. You're not supposed to be a woman if you're a man. You see, that's a lie, and that's from Satan. Oh, Satan. Is there Satan's real? Well, you 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 make that judgment for yourself. Is there evil in the world? Here, I'll tell you a better one. Why don't you start following Jesus and see how Satan, if Satan's really real? He'll show himself. But he doesn't care about those who he already has. He cares about those he doesn't have, like me and the rest of my friends and family who are actually my friends and family. I went to this event and I saw this whole, all these friends and families hanging out, giving handshakes and all this stuff. And the Lord showed me something. Y'all hated each other. I was like, whoa, it was the. It, it did not look like people loved each other. It looked like they put on a show. And I was a director. Anyways, y'all know who you are. But if you need alcohol to love someone, that's not love. That's what my mom did to me. She didn't want to talk to me, scream at me all day since I was 18 and moved out of the house. And suddenly she wants to come to me when she's drunk, call me when she's drunk every night in the middle of the night. Hey, how are you doing? Who are you? Who are you? I don't want any part of that. Because I'm done. I've, I've learned my lesson. I've lived that. I realized that from my own life. I need to have alcohol. for. I've done it for years to be accepted, to feel a little loose, or I need marijuana, drugs to feel accepted. Really? Is that something wrong with me? Two plus two equals four. No, it doesn't. I'm good. Are you? Because every day, only reason, the only reason I would wake up and is to have that fix. Oh, I need that fix. Because I'm getting all this anxiety, I'm getting all this worries, and blah, blah, blah. I just haven't had my, I just hadn't had my, what? Y'all don't have rest? You hearing all these thoughts everywhere? It's terrible. I'm not here to just judge you. It's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to set you free. You want freedom? You struggle with alcohol? Come to the altar. Get on your knees and bow to the Lord of heaven and earth and the entire universe and creation of time and space and gravity and dimensions and everything, every reality, everything. It all is the Lord. Bow to him. He'll heal you. Accept him into your life. Stop rebelling. Stop fighting God. How's that working out for you? For you? It's hard. It sucks, doesn't it? You hate everybody. Everyone hates you or that's the way you feel. You believe everything you hear. He said, she said, what are you doing? But that's your choice. You have a choice. We all have a choice to make. 
I know, I know I've been exactly where you've been in a different way, but I felt that pain. What good is it for you to be like our amazing president and to have all the things that you want, power, honor, respect, knowledge, wisdom, money, clothing, beautiful spouse or all the girls or boys that you want, people worshiping you. And to never feel loved. To never have peace. You got to do it again. You got to do something amazing again. You got to you got to get more drunk. You got to do this again. And don't you want to rest from your works? Don't you want to live life and and only just please God and just only care about what he thinks? Because that's where you'll find the rest. You'll never find it in your spouse, your kids, your job, all the money and possessions and achievements. You'll never find it. You could travel to the stars and you'll, not, you'll never have rest. But I tell you, this day is the day of salvation. Every day is the day of salvation. Y'all treat your kids like they're burdens. And I can relate to this. I can relate to everything you're going through. Oh, he's just judging me. He doesn't understand. I understand more than you think I understand. I probably understand more than you understand. And I'll tell you this. I tell you the truth. You think I want to stand up here and do this video to let everyone judge me? What kind of who's insane? That's insane. I got other things to do. Shoot, I got my own judgments, my own self-condemnation. I got to be bold to stand up for the truth. How many bold people do you see in the world? Somebody's following somebody. As long as these people accept me, F everybody else. But guess what? There'll come a day when those people won't accept you anymore. There is no salvation in this world. What does salvation mean? There is no, you'll never find rest. You'll never get that perfect job. Even if you do, you'll still, you'll still never have rest. People, you'll never feel like people like you. I don't like this world. I don't know about you. You keep choosing to live in this world. But I realized something. I don't, that, that, that guy who left my mom and left four kids behind. That's not my father. God's my father. I've been adopted into the kingdom of heaven. But here, let me sidestep this for a second for those of you who didn't know Jesus. And let me talk to those who think they know Jesus and think they know God. And a lot of people are saying, oh, I don't go to church because of this person or because of that person. Well, on the last day, God's going to ask you, well, why didn't you go to church? And you're going to say, because of them, because of him. He's like, I didn't tell you to pay attention to them. I told you to pay attention to me. Oh, because of this pastor or because of this preacher or this, that. But for those who do go to church and think you're so religious, Jesus says this. What does that parable go? Two people went to the altar to pray. One a Pharisee and one a tax collector. And the Pharisee said, looked up to heaven and said, I thank you, Lord, that I'm not like these sinners, worldly people. I, ta I tithe, I go to church, I volunteer, I do all this and this and this and this. And, and the tax collector says, he doesn't even look up to heaven. And this is what he says. He says, forgive me, Lord, I'm a sinner. He says, the second will walk away more justified than the first. You don't have to be religious because you go to church. You could be religious or political by making an inaccurate judgment about other people. 
Everyone's looking for love. Everyone's looking for hope. Me too. But true happiness and true hope comes from the obedience of God, obeying Him, following His Spirit. Some of you guys, you guys use the Word of God to hurt people. You use it to condemn people as a checklist. Look it, I go to church, I do this, I do that. Look at me, it makes me feel good. Look at that person, they messed up, oops. But you're not justified by your works. You're not justified by what you could do for God. You're justified by why Jesus and what he did for you. Jesus died for you. He lived a perfect life for you. You're a sinner. You're dirty. We're all dirty. We're all sinners. But, you know, I see people trying to live as if they're better than everybody else when they're not. You're not better than anybody. You're saved by grace. You're saved by mercy. You're saved by pity. As a father takes pity on his children, God loves you unconditionally and the human heart can't get it. Something wrong with our heart, we can't get it. We make everything a burden. We make everything, if I do this, then this. Those things, something could happen, cause and effect will happen. But God just loves you because he's God and he's love. Yes, he wants you to be more like him, but not the way you think you should be. The most important rules are this for you people who think that you're so religious and so righteous. Love God and love people. You can do this whole bucket list of all these things for God. And if you don't love people, it's a waste of time. You wasted your time. Love God and love people. That fulfills all the laws. You don't have to act like them. That's not what I'm saying. Oh, love means if they're doing something bad, let me go, go in with it. No, it means love them enough to not do it and to correct them from their wrongs. And here's one of the most misquoted verses ever. Judge not, Matthew 7, 1, 7 through 5. Matthew 1, 7 through 5. Judge not that you not be judged. For what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And the measure you use shall be measured to you. And why behold the mote that is in your brother's eye when you don't see the beam in your own eye? I say to you, cast out the mote out of your own eye, and then you will see your brother clearly. So basically, you guys use that and say, Oh, people can't judge me. I'm gay. People can't judge me. I'm this. People can't judge me. I'm doing this. Don't judge me. Okay. That's what your opinion is, my, is not my opinion. What you believe is what you believe. What I believe is what I believe. Okay, let me, let, me, let me break that down for you. If I kick you in your foot, you're going to go, ah, man, you shouldn't have done that. And I'm going to be like, that's just your opinion. That's pluralism. Relativism. Everything's relative. No, it's not. If I smack you across the face, it's going to hurt like hell. You're not going to go, ha, 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 ha. And some of you will because you're crazy and just so lost. But it's going to hurt. And you're going to want justice for that. How many times have you wanted justice for something that someone else did to you? Or how many times have other people want justice for what you did to them? So there must be a law, a moral standing, a non-crooked line that we can actually accurately judge people. Oh, you're just contradicting what you said earlier. You see, this is the greatest thing about the Holy Spirit. 
The words that I speak to you are spirit and they're truth and they're life. And they're a gift from above. You're just a man. You can't judge people. God has given those who love him his Holy Spirit as he did the Old Testament. He still does today. God gives to whomever he pleases and takes to whomever he pleases. One of the most important things that I'm learning is my value systems are, are not the same as God's value systems. I value this, but God values this. Let's just say there's a bracket of one, one, two, two, all the way down to 10. What's number one for God is to love him. And I, and I think I, that I do, but I put my works there. I don't actually put him there. Or he says, love your wife. And I put my wife in number four and he puts it in number two or three. You see, our value systems in this world are different. I've watched some people come through and they want what they want. And they're willing to disrespect the person to get it. I don't care about you. Give me what I want, how I want it, when I want it, like I want it. That's an abomination. It's terrible. No one wants to be treated that way. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. What you sow is what you reap. What you put out is what you get back. You think that people don't love you is because you don't love people. You think everyone hates you is because you hate everybody. You think everyone's after to, out to get you is because you're out to get others. No one else can hear your thoughts and knows the intentions in your heart, but you. So I'm going to end on this. Make a choice. Because all that food, that spiritual food that you get from the media and the world and all this music and Beyonce and Kanye or whatever the hell that is, all that stuff is telling you what to believe and how to see the world. And you, not knowing any better, just take it in. No one's denying your pains and your hurt. Those music, they, they're true though. That's how I feel, that's how people treated me. Yes, that's how people treated me too. But guess what? That's how you treated others. There has to come a point where you have to forgive them for what they did, as God has forgiven you. But for those who are living Christian life, I can't tell you how many times people make me mad And it sucks to forgive them because they don't deserve it. They don't deserve it. They don't deserve my forgiveness. I choose to give my forgiveness to whom I want. But guess what? If I don't forgive, he won't forgive me. And that weight and that burden will be on me. I don't want to carry a burden in my life because that takes away my peace and that takes away my joy. I don't want no burden. I don't want no burden for you. That's why I tell you this. That's why I'm doing this. I know people are going to judge me. and That's whatever. That's just human nature. You already judged me anyways. But for those who do want to be set free, church is not, it's not a building. It's not a pastor. It's not me. It's a relationship with God's son. A relationship. Some of this guy said, Oh, what does the Bible say that we have to have a relationship? Why can't we just memorize text? Well, here's the situation here. The Pharisees memorized the text. They memorized the whole Old Testament. And they didn't even see Jesus. They didn't even know it was the Messiah. And I'll tell you this much, as far as that question goes, where does the Bible say that we have to have a relationship with Jesus? The whole gospel is Jesus spending time with his 12 disciples. He's investing time into them. It's kind of one of those things where it's kind of like, duh. Like, are you breathing? Yeah, duh. Yeah, duh, he's having a relationship with them. Anyways, I don't want to knock you. I forgive you, but the point is this. 
Love God, love people. I thank you for watching. I love you guys. And I see the best in you guys. And I see the best in our community. I mean the entire world. We're all in this together. We are. So, thank you for tuning in and uh, hope you enjoy our material. God bless.